You're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Lindy, your host, and we've switched it up here in the fall. We are concentrating on the City of Brockton preliminary election that's on September 19th. <coughs> here in the studio is a familiar face because he's done some TV with me, is uh, Dennis Neary, Councilor from Ward 3. Nice to council see you, Council President a couple of times. That's exactly right. So we did some exactly. of the before the council shows <laughs> and informed the people about what's going on in Ward 3. You get to run for re-election. Aren't, aren't you happy? I'm very happy. I'm thrilled. Yeah. I mean, I have nothing wrong with having a, uh, an election, whether it be primary election or both, which I do have. I, I think it's I think it's great. I mean, the challenge is, is, is wonderful. I think it keeps uh, the incumbent on his toes. There you go. And that's the way I look at it, and that's just the way I'm, you know, proceeding to move ahead with the campaign process. So what more can I say? I'm ready to go. Okay. Now, <laughs> you've been at this for a while. You were a school committee member for 20 years. 20 years. Okay. 20 and years. And city councilor, count. 14 years. 14 years. So yes. that's a long time. And you know, when I first started, uh, keep in mind, when I first ran for school committee back in 1977, it was based upon Democrat-Republican Party mm -hmm. affiliation. Then the following, when I when I ran, I didn't succeed in 77, but I ran in 79. I ran against the incumbent, uh, George Lula Massa, and it was he and I went right to November. We didn't have a primary, and I won two to one, but that's when you went to nonpartisan, and it's been that way since. So every vote counts. It sure does. Every well, vote counts. If you think Brockton, every vote does count. It Go does. Go back to 1981, we had a one-vote mayor election. Exactly. I remember Linda Belzotti at one point in Ward 4. I think it was six votes, mm, if I'm not hers mistaken. Was. Yes. Um, if you look at Ward 5, uh, Councillor uh, Beauregard last time around was three or four votes. Exactly. Something like that. Uh, Ward 1 in the past has been a close race. So, you know, every vote counts. People, and people, for whatever reason, turn out for the presidential election, right. the governor's election, right. you get to the city preliminary election, and if you remember back a few years ago, we had 4%. That's right. And, and that's what I hope doesn't happen, and that's what I have to do to get my people out, is to make sure that they do get out, because that's, that's, the, that's the situation that you're faced with, is a lot of people, and I've already talked to a lot of people, that, you know, well, catch you in November. No, you can't catch me in November. Right. You need to catch me in September. And then September 19th, uh, Tuesday, September 19th, preliminary day. Uh, polls open at 7 in the morning till 8 at night. Uh, it's very important that everybody gets out in Ward 3 so that I can at least serve for two more years and continue doing what I've always done, work in the best interest of the people of Ward 3. That's the job I've always done. I'm going to give it my whole heart you know, and soul that I've been doing. And uh, I, I'm always busy with it. It's not like I sit back or not. I'm, I'm always busy with it. So um, I feel confident, having been in the the arena for a long time that uh, I, I think the people uh, will see what I've done over the years and, and uh, uh, know we have a few issues in, in the war that we're fighting right now to this to this day, you know what I mean? And I'm on top of it with the, a lot of the people that uh, um, want me to be with them on it and, uh, you know, we, we got to move forward. So uh, now you believed in regular communication, being on TV, holding regular ward meetings, correct. okay? The big issues you're talking about, I would assume, one of them might be the proposed development that's trying to go in off of West Chestnut Street. Exactly. You've had a meeting about it already. Two You've meetings. talked to you, two, meetings. two meetings. Tell us about that and your position on it and where you think it's going. My position is is for it not to be there. In other words, the project is being built in West Bridgewater with 33 homes to, to be on that uh, uh, large piece of property, which is uh, one time was... Uh, um, owned by the uh, Petronellis, uh, still is to be truthful with you. Mm -hmm. um, but they want to make access road, um, you know, from Brockton, West Chestnut Street. We can't do that. We just can't. And the people that live up in that area, West Chestnut Street, uh, Ash Street, uh, you take some of your other side streets, uh, Whitmore, Emory Street, um, Talbot Street. You can't. You can't add more traffic to West Chestnut Street. I live on West Chestnut Street, right. and we haven't problems with traffic on West Chestnut Street, even at my end. So that's where our fight is. And truthfully, when you think about it, does it make sense to have a project in West Bridgewater and your access road in the city of Brockton? Think of it. They still have to come in to respond. West Bridgewater does fire department, police department, school buses to come and pick up the kids to take them back to West Bridgewater schools. Doesn't mm -hmm. make sense to me. And the fight's going to continue, and, and the people are, are, there's a group that's organized that, that are staying right on top of it. Every time the issue comes before planning board, it gets postponed. Mm -hmm. The issue is now, how many times can it be postponed? And right. It's postponed because I believe the fact is it's a different plan that is in place. But and I haven't seen the plan. I don't. I'm sat and met with any of the developers there. I, I'm I'm not going to. 
Um, my interest is what we have to do uh, as constituents, and, and that's what I am as a city council and a constituent, that we don't want that to happen, uh, especially West, West Chestnut so Street. So I right. drive down there quite a bit. That's a major road, West Chestnut Street. Exactly. I, I lived on Ash Street down the other end when I grew up near the Bent Playground. So a lot of times go down there, go to Forest Ave, go all the way down. The road is in. There's a road there. It's it it, it it's they cleared the brush. Is they, is that a bit presumptuous? They they cleared the brush. Um, we we call it a tease, or as some people have said to me, what a little slap in your face. Mm -hmm. Because it can't go it can't go anywhere. They can clean, right? Because it's private land. Right. I can't stop them from that. None okay. of us can stop them. It's same as just about a month or two ago, they made sure they put the little hook up went across the way the hook up to the water. It it doesn't go nowhere. It can't be turned on. In order for it to be turned on, it has to be turned on by the city council. The city councilor would have to sign, which would be I, to give an intermunicipal agreement. And I'm not going to do that. Mm -hmm. I'm just not going to do that. Keep in mind, going back to traffic, you know, you deal with, that street deals with anywhere from 16 to 17,000 cars, you know, a day. That's a lot of traffic, you know. Figure it from morning to night. It's a lot, a lot of traffic, and that's the concern that the people have there. And, and, you know, it's the narrowest part of West Chestnut Street when you think about it. We have enough trouble with cars coming out of Ash Street, West Chestnut Street, before and even after when school gets out, you know, let alone what we would be having, you know, with a project like that of its magnitude there. So, you know, I, my fight's on, and, and, and I'll keep up the fight because that's my job as a city councilor, and I know the people that are rallied together. Um, and they're, they're together pretty strong. They have, they're all, they got their people on, on the computer, their names, addresses, and when I say let's have a meeting, they hit a button and we have a meeting. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's still going to continue. It's still going to continue. I'll ask you challenges when they hear about why they think they would do a better job. I'll ask you why experience matters for the, for the city councilor. Well, I, th I, I think uh, what matters with experience is just knowing you know, knowing that when you get to a city council meeting, you're not there just to say yes and no to whatever's put in front of you. It's the work that you have to do. Um, it, it's all a, a, a little bit above and beyond sometimes. I mean, as I've said it to some people, yeah, it's, it's a part-time job with a part-time pay, but it can be 24-7. Why? Because it's the way you make it as a counselor, and I've made it that way, and so have my other colleagues, too. Um, and this year has been a very challenging year, I have to tell you, Mark, for all of us. I mean, everyone, there seems to be something going on. There seems to be issues and in, 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 uh, other issues that are yet to come before us. Um, but it isn't just joining a group of men and women, you know what I mean, to, to you know, do what we think is in the best interest of the city. We want to do that. We want more police. We want more fire. Public safety is a big issue. Um, doing our streets and roadways over is another big issue, but it takes time to do that, and you've got to know how to do that and join forces with your other um, collaborators to make sure that you can you you can do that. Um, I just sometimes I get a little disenchanted, and as I look at you know some of the people that are running this year, is you know do you really want to run, or were you told to run? That's a great question, mm -hmm. and that's been poised a couple of times even to me. As an incumbent, people said, are, are they running because they want to, or is somebody saying, you need to? That That's not good, because you're not going to be successful, to be truthful with you. Well, I'll be asking everybody why they're running. That's the number one question, especially for a newcomer, a new challenger, or someone that you've never seen before. There's exactly. a few candidates citywide right. in the different wards in the school committee races, council races. I've never exactly. seen them before. I've never seen them on a board of commission. I've never seen them involved. They may be involved. I mean, if you go back to the good few, old days, I guess, of a lot of people ran a little league and then they ran for office. They may not have been involved in government, but some of the, I, I went to an event last week just to meet some of the candidates in the faces because I don't yeah. know who they are. I, I, and, and I'll be truthful with you. I, I, I know one of my opponents, but I do not know anything more about the other. Mm -hmm. Never have seen her, never met her. I, I, I don't know nothing more than what I could, what I could say. Um, but I will tell you this, why am I running for re-election? Because I like what I'm doing. I like serving the people of Ward 3. They've been good to me. I mean, 14 years of the longest serving um, city council from Ward 3. And, and I want to continue. And I'm going to continue to do my job to my very best that I can. And, and if I'm not, then okay, I can understand the situation. But I think that I'm doing my job. I'm doing, doing a very good job at it. And, and I think they're very pleased with me, like you say. I'm accessible, available, we do ward meetings, 
Um, yeah, sometimes a phone call or two can fall between a crack. You know how that works. I mm -hmm. mean, uh, we all get them. If it isn't the cell phone, it's the landline. So you have to have both. Some some right. say you don't. I say you do um, right. because you have to. You have to. You know. So um, that's why I'm back out there, and I'll be out there. I'm I'm out there now. So um, are you walking around? Are you talking to people? I am. I'm out. I'm, and as you know, I've had a, a bad hip and knee over the last year or two. But it's not have, stopping yeah. me. I've been hopping in and out of my old Lincoln and putting up my signs and talking to people. As a matter of fact, a little bit later today, I got three or four people that called me and left a message. I need one of your signs. Where's my sign? So when they say, I, I don't wait and say to somebody else, can you go put a sign? Dennis puts a sign together and off I go because what's it do? It gives you the opportunity to talk to that that, that, can that, that that person, and he, and he he or she may say, we only see you when it's time for a sign, but we love seeing you. That's fine. You know what I mean? I mean that's how it works. You know they know how to get in touch with me. You know, so I just keep on going. What are you hearing out there for issues? You, you, you we talked about the the development, public safety, obviously. And, and, and I think the issues um, still are people still have the great concern to you know their tax dollars and how how they went up you know, this year and, and why. And we all know what happened there is because the mayor had to use the full 2.5% when, when he prepared the budget. He had no choice. Um, you know, what's our budget? Uh, about $406 million, and, and I would say about $175, $176 million of its school department. And we're, and we're already still $16 million shy. Um, another issue that you're going to be dealing with right there is starting to kick jump a court case. You're going to have to. We're going to have to start to jump a court case. Um, and what's the cost? We put $100,000 away already. Um, and hopefully, hopefully all other communities that you join in have, have done something as well. But it's not going to be something that's going to be decided in one day. Well, you it know started that. in Brockton. <laughs> right. It's been and through a couple of rounds. So couple now of rounds. we're in a new round. Yeah, it's a, it's a new round. You, I think you were on the school committee I was. At that I point, was so. when it came on. And, and, and then when it did come to its conclusion, that's how we ended up with the uh, the Ed Reform Act of 1993. Um, and thank God that we did. We got a lot of good money there, over $72 million in seven years. Uh, we did a lot of great things, but it diminished as the time went on right. because it was always foundation-level budget. The more you spend, the more we'll give you. Right. And then what happened? The formulation fell apart. And then the charter school and, and the, the charter rest school. of history. So. Exactly, okay. exactly. So, I mean, uh, those, are, those are some of the uh, issues you're going to hear from, uh, from people. And... Uh, we um, still have some issues that are on the table that uh, I know the mayor is wanting us to discuss, which is you know the purchase of the desalination plant and its savings and what it can do, uh, um, you know, to help the city out. But I, I I don't want to make too much of a comment to it. I I think I'm a little hesitant to say that it's a great idea because I don't think it really is because you've already put it to the taxpayer once and I wasn't there then. I came on just after. I got the minute sign. I want to give you a chance, phone number, website, talk to the voters. Forget well, about me. Forget about you? Yeah. How I can know. we? We can't. See, no. All I'm going to, uh, what I want to do is ask the voters of Ward 3 to please come out on Tuesday, September 19th, 2017. It's primary day, preliminary primary day. I am on the ballot, and it's very important that you do come out to vote for me on primary day so I can succeed to November and then be successful uh, as the winner in November. Uh, contact number, landline, 508-587-1513. My cell is 617-590-4080. I'm just an old-fashioned type of guy, so you can catch me at email, and it's Dennis Aniri at hotmail.com. So with that being said, I hope you come out and support me as you have the past 14 years. I want to look forward to working for you for the next two years. And I know I will continue to do what I think is in the best interest of the people of Ward 3 first, and then I take a look at what I have to do with the rest of the city as well. But I appreciate your support over the years, so please, Tuesday, September 19th, it's a big day. I need your help. Thanks. Thanks, Dennis. Thank you, young man. We'll, we'll, we'll have you back in, and we'll follow the Ward 3 race. Thank you. You're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Lindy, your host. Stay tuned for more candidates, information on channels 9, 12, and 98. We will be out there following all the races, a lot of races, but it is important to do your civic duty and vote. Thank you for joining us.